Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. It's our favorite time of the week because we've got the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves right in front of me. Let's check them out. All right, first up, new exclusive to unveil this week from CJRB. It is the Pyrite with the new buoy blade shape in our exclusive handle configuration. That being Micarta handles with a titanium bolster and titanium pocket clip. With that, you've got the new buoy shaped blade still with the RPM9 powder metallurgy steel, just a hair over three inches long. And the price is the same, about 73 bucks. Uh, for all of these exclusive versions like so. And it is such a cool knife and it is even arguably cooler with this blade shape right here. It's definitely got a ton of personality. You've got a very fine tip for piercing, uh, the belly for slicing, and you've got a, a new feature for any of the pyrite shapes, a fuller. It's technically a fuller? I mean, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we're gonna call it a fuller. It's, it's a long fuller. It's a long, long puller fuller. Um, Yes, I don't know why I, I prevaricated there for a moment. It's clearly a fuller and it is on both sides. It also allows you to do that reverse flick thing that people like so much these days. Adds in a little, uh, you know, an extra bit of fun to the knife. You've still got the thumb studs, of course. And actually you can use the thumb studs for that reverse flick too. The uh, fuller just gives you a new option right now too. Uh, stone wash finish on the blade. That's gonna help scratches hide uh, as you use the knife. They aren't gonna you know, shout their presence as much as they would on a uh, higher polished blade. And it's, it's just ready to work. And you've got this really cool handle to go with it. The button lock action is quite good. As all pyrites are these days, you've got a handle there that Unless you have super big paws, you'll be able to get a full four fingered grip on. It might not be like a huge working knife style of grip, but there's plenty of uh, handle to grab onto when you need to cut big cuts. There you go, check it out. Awesome little EDC with an even more awesome blade shape. Now they're all pretty awesome, but come on, there's something about this big aggressive clip point like this that uh, just kind of sets our little knife hearts afire a little bit, at least mine anyway. Check it out. <laughs> next up, um, from the next, the other four letter C company in the uh, knife world, CRKT, uh, three new designs to look at. That, that works as a transition, I guess. Alphabetically. Nah. Is it alphabetically? Yeah. J, K, L, M, N, B, Q, R, S, yeah, that's true. Is it bad I have to like actually say the the sequence to oftentimes to remember? Yes. Yeah, oh well. Check this out, a Lucas Burnley design. This is the Ibis, which is of course a uh, particular type of bird that you might be able to see a little bit of uh, that bird's shape in the shape of this here knife. What do we got? We've got, uh, ooh, like a blade length, almost identical actually. We're 3.05 on the Pyrite, we're 3.09 on uh, this CRKT Ibis right here. Uh, no button lock, you do ha instead have a G10 front handle scale. It is teal, almost that Tiffany green, Tiffany blue, whatever they call it, uh, type of color with a steel frame lock on the back, stone washed finish on that frame and the blade, nice teal accent uh, around the pivot to bring that color around to the backside and really nicely executed blade. 3.09 inches as mentioned, uh, 14C28N, that's the uh, Sandvik formulation for a very tough, very fine grained stainless steel, something that takes a really fine edge really easily. And it's such a fun shape for an everyday carry style knife. It's basically all belly, you've got a very acute tip, good for just general purpose usage in the modern era, I would argue. Nice chamfered edges, keep, keeps things nice and comfortable when you're getting up with your finger fingers on that blade too. Folded over pocket clip, it's not deep carry, but it is flush, or it is pocketed, I should say, into the frame with some flush mounted screws, very nice. Ball bearings in the pivot, and you've got two ways to open. You got the flipper tab, and you've got the thumb studs. Let's try, let's see if I could reverse flick with these thumb studs, but I wanna make things really difficult for myself today. Not too shabby. 75 bucks for this knife. Very cool design, cool color too. I'm always happy to see things that aren't, you know, another black 
handled folding knife because nothing wrong with that. I just see a lot of them day to day. <laughs> Tends to happen. Um, two more from CRKT. Uh, and these next two are both from, uh, are both arisen from their US partnerships, partnerships with other US manufacturers. And they've partnered with some really like top notch ones, really. Hogue and Tops. First, the Hogue. We've got an automatic knife. This is the Minnow, a Philip Booth design. Coming in at uh, just under 200 bucks. You've got a Magna Cut blade here. Uh, not very long, 1.68 inches, but quite broad. Straight up sheep's foot shape. You've got a swedge full length along the spine and a high flat grind. This is gonna be a pretty decently cutting knife. The efficiency is not gonna, or the efficiency of that cross section is not gonna get in its own way very much. Yet it feels stout and that's really down to the handle. This is not a minuscule handle despite it being a you know, small thing. I mean, check it out. We've got linen micarta handle scales. Uh, I believe this is steel. I don't think this is uh, titanium for the bolsters. Yep, stainless steel bolsters. Uh, green linen micarta has a nice classy look, feels good, gives you a little bit of extra texture, which can be important on a knife that's only a three finger, mat, two and a half to three finger grip, depending on your hand size, as you can see here. But it's got the girth, it's got the texture, it's got the width, importantly as well, that feels fairly stable in the hand. It doesn't feel like you're gonna drop it. Um, unlike, you know, like keychain sized knives might have this same kind of overall length, but you're not gonna have the same type of grip on this. This is gonna take up a little bit more uh, space in your pocket too, uh, as a result, but hey, that's a worthy trade-off. You do have a pocket clip folded over here. Uh, you could slap that uh, or take that off if you want. I think this would especially make a great fifth pocket carry in a pair of jeans. Let's check out the push button automatic action. Very nice. Magnet cut, of course, very nice as well. Nice and stainless, nice and tough, and holds an edge quite well. There you go. The, the minnow made by Hogue uh, for CRKT. Next, you've got the fixed blade from Tops for CRKT. This is the Soldotna, Soldotna. I'm not sure how to pronounce that actually. Uh, but this is a Russ Commer design. And if you're familiar with his work, you're gonna see uh, his DNA in this, uh, not, the, not his actual DNA, but his design language in this overall shape. Uh, so about the same price as uh, this Hogue Made Auto actually here. Uh, this is 200 bucks even, uh, three and a half inch, 1095 carbon steel blade with that uh, tungsten gray Cerakote, or not tungsten, but a gray Cerakote finish. Uh, so it keeps the, uh, the friction down while also protecting uh, that non-stainless steel underneath. Uh, that's gonna help keep the, pre the uh, corrosion monsters at bay just a little bit. And it doesn't have that thick powder coat type of texture that could slow down your cuts. Handles are micarta. You've got that red liner, hollow tubes uh, to keep things secured, flared on the ends. You could of course use these uh, holes to thread lanyards through, attach it uh, to the end of a stick if you needed to reach something uh, farther away. Don't actually use it as a spear while throwing your knife because you know then something happens, you've lost your knife. Um, anyway, <laughs> rant over. Fairly tame as far as rants go. Well, it's a good thing you have a survival knife because you were lost in that rant. Let me find my way out of the weeds then there, Thomas. What do we got here though, really? Uh, stylistically, small camp knife, bird and trout style of a small game hunter as well. Really cool blade shape. I like the uh, elliptical shape to it. Again, almost all belly and a very fine tip on this knife. You've got decent slicing geometry with the almost full flat grind there. Nice, agile and nimble and accurate feeling handle. You're really gonna be able to work that blade very precisely. The sheath, here it is. It is leather and it is dyed black. You got a nice thick welt on the side and I'm really digging this brass post style of retention here rather than a snap. It's a little classier feeling. It's more discreet in a way. It's not, you don't have that loud snap pop thing going on. That's embarrassing. And it's going in. What's happening here? It's just fine a second ago. The camera, man, it'll mess you up every time. Uh, I also like the flap direction that we've got right here. It's facing backwards. So if you're moving through uh, brush or through brambles, uh, 
less likely to get snagged and pop loose on you. Very, very nice. And as I mentioned, almost every time we see any of their, uh, their collaborations with the US manufacturers, I just love seeing that. And they picked some good partners to, to boot. Next up, uh, we've got uh, a couple more, well, one more fixed blade to look at. Uh, it is a fixed blade uh, an, of an Almar design, and it is joined by a folding version of it as well. These, this is, these are they. Language all over the place today. This is the Rexrote. We've got a fixed blade and a folding knife design. We're about 100 bucks for the fixed blade, about 142 and some change for the folder. They're both gonna come with a D2 blade. And unlike some knife designs out there where you have like a fixed blade version and a folding knife version, where they tend to diverge a little bit, they have their own identity sort of, these dimensionally are almost exactly the same. This folder almost perfectly mimics the fixed blades dimensions and shape. A few little differences, the uh, finger choil area, if you wanna call it that, uh, is different between the two. Slight differences here uh, in the handle to give you access to the thumb stud, but overall pretty consistent. Uh, let's check out the fixed blade first. Uh, 101 bucks and some change for this. Four and a quarter inch blade, D2 steel. This thing has a small compact tactical knife uh, or self-defense knife written all over it, in my opinion. Makes some decent all around stuff too. It doesn't have a blade shape that uh, becomes unuseful at just general purpose utility. Wouldn't wanna spend hours like uh, using this as an outdoor knife. It doesn't really have the girth that I would prefer for something like that, where you would you know, be carving wood, doing uh, longer tasks like this. This is more about getting it out, making the, the few quick cuts you need or using it in that self-defense situation and getting out of dodge. We've got a full tang protruding here at the back. This uh, tang or the protruding section does bevel down almost to a uh, perfectly crisp point here. It stops just shy of that so that it's rounded over and it's not gonna bug you too much if you uh, happen to get you know the fleshy bits of your hand there. But if you needed to use it to bash on stuff, it's definitely going to concentrate force quite nicely with that. Sheath, here it is. It is in ejection molded, clicks in kind of like Kydex. We've got a uh, honing rod here, ceramic built into the sheath. That's a nice little feature to make sure you've always got that crisp edge. And on the back, we've got a belt attachment. It's kind of got like that dots style of a uh, lock here on it. So that unless you're pushing that button up, it's not going to unlock and you can further, which way, there we go. No, there it is. Uh, lock that out so you can keep it from being pressed inadvertently. And the whole pattern there is uh, that tech lock or that typical tech lock hole spacing right there. So you'll be able to carry this horizontally like shown, like shown, you'll be able to rig it up horizontally if you want as well. Onto the folder, the first thing you'll probably notice are these anodized liners. Uh, it is a uh, blue steel actually. Um, G10 handles are the same and no pocket clip is the other thing. They maintain kind of the contoured shape of the fixed blade handles and they didn't want that pocket clip to get in the way. So that's the thing. Ergonomically, you do get a little bit more of a, uh, a point right there on the handle so you feel that and the uh, finger choil area doesn't have as much space to choke up on as the fixed blade. But other than that, remarkably similar in their uh, dimensions. We've got a liner lock. There it is in the closed position. A Little bit uh, more careful is the way I would describe having to open this knife um, because of no pocket clip, there's less for your fingers to anchor on, but as you can see, it can still be done. And the protruding, instead of a protruding tang at the back, we've got the two liners sticking out and still giving you that point. Now in lieu of the pocket clip, we've got a very kind of throwback style leather slip sheath right here. Uh, not, not designed with a flap over it to keep it in, it's designed for quicker access in keeping with sort of the, uh, the tactical self-defense uh, mission of this knife, at least that's how I'm perceiving it. So there you go, nice and old school. Um, what else should we mention about this? It does have, yeah, it's got that washer style of construction, so a little more rugged feeling than the, that glass-like smoothness that you can get from ball bearings. Some folks uh, really dig that and you don't see as many of those things on the market nowadays, so always worth calling out. Well, speaking of you know larger folders that 
Maybe lean tactical, but can definitely take a beating. A new version, limited edition version of the 308 from Zero Tolerance. This is the 308 CF. Uh, you've got uh, a three and three quarter inch M390 blade, carbon fiber handles, titanium back, milled and sculpted per usual. And these are gonna run about 420 bucks right now. Now you do have ball bearings in this pivot, which can be more susceptible to dust and grit and that sort of thing. But man, it's got that just authoritative crack when the blade opens. It just feels so good. Lock up, super stable with that lock bar insert on the titanium frame lock right there. The blade, big and broad, a little bit on the chunkier side, but nice and wide with a high flat grind, so it should still slice pretty decently while still feeling like a you know very robust tool in the hand. Last but not least, fun little detail always worth uh, bringing up. The pivot is actually adjustable with a half inch wrench right here, rather than your typical Torx style construction. Just further lending, it's, uh, you know, leaning into that beefy persona. Let's, let's flip it open one more time, just because I, I want to. That feels great. 308 is a uh, really cool knife. If you like this one, as I mentioned, it is limited, however. Uh, next up, we've got a Boker Plus made in Italy, uh, a Les George design. This is the 2024 collection knife for this year, coming in at about 424 and some change. Uh, similar size to the previous two knives we looked at, maybe just a skosh uh, more compact, but still feels really good. Uh, 3.66 inch blade Magna Cut steel here, about a, uh, yeah, two thirds height flat grind on it, but you've got a thicker blade as well. Might not be quite as efficient of a slicer as the last uh, ZT, but it is going to have that beefy feel to it. As far as the geometry the blade is a little bit on the thicker side and the, uh, the flat grind doesn't go all the way up. It's gonna be a little bit of a, uh, a chunkier slicer than the uh, ZT we just looked at. And the cool part, Check out these handles. Two different uh, patterns of fat carbon is creating this look. Uh, the bolstered, quote unquote, bolstered section is the black dunes pattern, and the rear section is the space coral pattern. Uh, looks really cool. It almost looks like folded titanium in a way. It's really sweet. Uh, blue accents, blue barrel spacers, titanium frame lock on the back. Check out that huge, bodacious, milled pocket clip right there. Definitely has an attitude. It's nice and ramped so on the uh, end, so it should be pretty easy to use. And despite the girth, it doesn't get in the way too much. Honestly, like the way I would, I would normally be gripping this knife, which would be this uh, hammer, or sorry, saber grip right here, that point just kind of nestles in to the hollow part of my, my hand right there. Works pretty nicely. I should mention also, this is also a limited knife. As you can see right here, we are serialized out of 500. Next up, another Italian made knife, or two of them. Uh, in fact, the uh, new Lion Steel Skinny. There's two versions, um, two tiers, I should say. There are how many different variants? Uh, let me check real quick. Uh, 11 different uh, options. Uh, you can get it with an aluminum handle or with a titanium handle. Uh, the aluminum, of course, uh, there will be a few uh, more brightly colored variants uh, than you, you are able to achieve on titanium, but I happen to really like this one, which is a little bit more on the subtle side. Uh, it's earth brown aluminum with the canvas micarta inlay. These come in uh, about 174. You got a 3.3 inch blade, magna cut steel, nice and narrow for that agility, going around cuts especially, that's gonna be a lot easier to cut a circle than you know a wide blade like on this 308 that we just looked at. Uh, and also, the other advantage, a lot more skinny in the pocket. Very easy to uh, incorporate even if you've got more limited space in your uh, pockets these days because it takes up so little room in general. This is an integral folder, uh, kind of leaning into Lion Steel's strength. That's kind of one of their calling cards, uh, them being so good at integral folders these days. So handle type of titanium or aluminum, one piece, nothing to get in the way, nothing to, sorry, not, not nothing to get in the way, nothing to kind of come loose uh, and break on you quite as easily. We've got a tail mounted pocket clip, deep carry, which is pretty much my favorite way of doing the deep carry pocket clip. Uh, 
removable with the single domed screw there at the back. The titanium versions, uh, this one here comes in at about $300 with the carbon fiber inlay. Again, we'll link to the whole series below so you can check out all of the different options. MagnaCut, as mentioned again, frame lock, keeping things secure. Just feels good and always love that crown spine on many Italian knives out there because it's so comfortable and it just looks cool too. Uh, other lion steel things, we've got the removable flipper tab right there. So if you happen to be somewhere where flippers are either not allowed or just something you don't prefer, you can remove it. Let's check out, we do have the, uh, the milled fuller lines there. Let's see if we can do, yeah, reverse flick on that works pretty nicely. You can of course thumb open it uh, without the flipper tab also if you wish. It could be a, a pretty good gentlemanly knife if you want your gents knife to still, or your formal knife to have like a little more meat on the bone, if that makes sense. Uh, you don't want it to feel like a dainty thing that's you know just made for light cutting. The skinny could be a very good option for you. Uh, next up, we've got a new Guardian Tactical. This is the Scout, three and a half inch LMAX blade with this very cool clip point, like notched clip point shape. Not quite a harpoon tip, I would say, because of the way it looks. Uh, but these come in about 275 right now. The Olmec steel is good stuff. Um, what I like here, though, is it feels a little bit thinner uh, than a lot of the Guardian Tactical knives that, at least in my memory, uh, are possessing. Uh, so that's going to help the cutting geometry a little bit. And it's still not a super thin blade, however, but to mitigate that, it feels like we've got an ever so slight hollow grind on this knife as well. That should go a long way to keeping this uh, being more one of the more EDC friendly uh, OTF autos out there. And by that, I only mean something that's going to slice a little more nicely as opposed to just being a uh, you know, like a tactical implement, which uh, is something that you see a lot of in the OTF genre, in my opinion. The chassis is aluminum, a single sided pocket clip in this case, so it's not not as lefty friendly as it could be. Uh, three ball bearings there at the back. Uh, normally you might see one of those to act as a glass breaker and I bet you the, the big one there in the center still could, but looks pretty cool actually the way, the way it is down there. It almost looks like it uh, is like a charging base, like a mag one of those like magnetic charging bases. I, don't know I was thinking if your glass is triple laminated. <laughs> Could be that. Or maybe there's like secret USB functionality in here we don't know about. Let me, let me tell you one of the things I uh, like most about pretty much any Guardian, Guardian Tactical OTF, that's the switch right here. It's asymmetrical and the shapes just work really well with the way your thumb kind of naturally operates. It's scooped out on the push forward to make sure you've got positive traction. And then when you want to get up there with the whole pad of your thumb to pull back on it, the, you know, curved the other way, it's like convex, that's the word, um, curve on that just feels nice and comfy and then ready to go. The action feels very solid. It's not like a wrist snapping feel when it opens but it feels just right. Very nice. Cool blade shape, cool steel, pretty uh, decent cutter for everyday use in my opinion. Uh, the Almost the same things could be said about the next one. We've got a big old batch of McNeese push button automatics, the uh, Mac 2 model. Uh, this one in particular, I just loved this engraved motif on this one. We've got some more plain Jane ones uh, if you don't want the, uh, the World War II inspired graphics right here. Uh, the Tiger Bomber version is what this is. It comes in at 410 bucks. Uh, I believe uh, the other versions might come in a little bit less expensive, the ones without the engraving. Uh, yeah, about 400 bucks for a, a plain titanium. Uh, there's also some milled versions as well with, uh, if you prefer that. Um, sorry, I said titanium. These are aluminum handles. Pardon my misspeaking. Uh, the blade itself is three and three eighths of an inch magna cut steel with a hollow grind, which will mitigate the thickness of the blade somewhat in keeping the edge nice and thin and more everyday slicey or cuttable, but you still have the robustness of that thick tang when you need to push it. The tip actually carries some of that strength out there too. Like the hollow grind itself, the thickness behind the edge is very nice and thin but check out 
the tip geometry right there. You're not gonna give up some robustness at the tip the way they've ground this either. Uh, that can be a worry well, with some hollow grinds. You don't want, you can get really nice and narrow, which will pierce really well, but it's not gonna be quite as strong. So you definitely have uh, a grind focusing on strength at the tip combined with the everyday slicing readiness of the blade. There is the folded dimensions. It's a pretty tidy little knife for the, uh, given the, you know, decidedly full size blade going on. And you, you feel like you're getting the max out of that handle real estate, maximizing the amount of blade you've actually got to worth, work with. That's very nice. Single position pocket clip, simple bent style right there. It all just feels super solid. These are US made and very cool. Next up, we have a Grant and Gavin Hawk product. Uh, and so you're going to expect these are gonna be pretty expensive. And that is true. Um, this is the Shortcut, a titanium locking utility knife blade holder coming in at $4.99 right now. Uh, you've got that replaceable blade capability. It comes with this serrated blade, which should offer plenty of kind of ripping power uh, along with the replaceable nature of it. The lock, what do they call it actually? It's the tie lock, right? It's, it's the same uh, as we saw on their, uh, their Chris Reeve collaboration. Yes, it is. Just had to make sure I had my nomenclature correct. So you can see right there, it is locking. Spring loaded, the bar rests in that notch right there. And it does allow you to one hand close it in a little bit of a uh, precarious fashion and that might be down to the narrowness of the handle back here. Uh, but you do have a flipper to open it back up when you're ready. It works really nicely. Uh, even if this weren't locking, I would feel pretty uh, secure in it. And that's due to the shape of the uh, actual holder portion of the knife right up here. Your index finger would rest right there. So even if this does come unlocked, your fingers are right there with the grip, pushing it right back into place. And with the lock there, your thumb's gonna be resting right on that lock bar too. Everything about it is just kind of, forces are naturally working to keep it locked, even if the lock were to somehow fail, which feels very unlikely uh, here in the hand. Other details, spring-loaded clip there at the back, which is always fun. Uh, milled portion in the titanium, you've got their logo, the talons going on. Uh, the backspacer here is integral with the front side of the titanium. And what's it, look, it looks like a uh, Torx screw head there uh, to facilitate the blade changes. So you will need a tool to change the blade on this particular item. Uh, next up, uh, the Cancept Cassowary. And the value on these is actually pretty incredible. Uh, you've got titanium frame lock flipper, S35 VN steel, three inch blade. So it's a size that will uh, you be able to take just about anywhere. 150 bucks and it feels like a much more expensive knife. Maybe not a much more expensive knife, but it has that feeling of being a truly premium knife for just 150 bucks. This version has the uh, black titanium handle or black stone washed handle with the black stone washed blade. Uh, but there are how many versions here? Five different options uh, with different titanium handle treatments. Uh, we've got an anodized bronze. Uh, we've got some uh, Damascus blade versions too. I don't think they're Damas steel. Yeah, they, I think they're the VG10 core Damascus. Uh, and you can get that with a plain titanium handle for the same price actually, 150, or uh, a kind of Chidori style lightning strike titanium handle for 200. So that's also an option. Enough about the specs, let's talk about the knife. Three and a half finger grip for me, with a, which I do have slightly larger than average hand, so your mileage may vary. Nice dimpled, uh, what's the word, pivot uh, on both sides, adds a nice touch, gold in this case. Ball bearings in the pivot with that frame lock. Let's flip it. Very nice. I like this thing here. You see that uh, on a few uh, other designs out there and it's always a detail that I like. That curve of the pocket or the uh, of the flipper tab is integrated into the backside of the handle there. So it has a real natural feel when you get your finger up there. You're really able to positively find that flipper tab and then do the flip that you need. 
The blade should be pretty nice day to day. It's not the uh, the thinnest, sliciest in the world, but it certainly is going to be a quite slicey little design, even though the grind uh, is only kind of midway on the blade. I like that full length swedge behind it to kind of keep the drag at a minimum too. I was checking to see if uh, you could use that fuller as a uh, another opening deployment method, but it is kind of buried in the handle when it's closed. So it's more decorative really. Dig it. Like the contour on the titanium too, just all the details are spot on, especially when you throw in that price tag. All right, we started the video on the more affordable side of things. I uh, will finish it the same way. Actually, this is the most affordable knife we've looked at so far. Uh, another concept, this is a Nick Rogers designed egress. Did I mean, was there a designer on this last one on the cassowary? I, if I did, I didn't mention it. Um, Justin Koch. Uh, anyway, back to the egress by Nick Rogers. 50, about 59 bucks, three and a half inch, 14C 28N blade. Thomas, what would you call that blade shape? A sheep toe. Now you're just trying to make me mad. We actually call it a Warncliffe on the site, but yeah, we, we could go with Warncliffe. Sandvik steel, this 14C 28N. I'm, I don't know if I mentioned it specifically today. We did talk about it once earlier, but I'm a big fan of this steel, especially on the, the lower price ranged stuff. It takes a fine edge so, so nicely. And I love the toughness uh, that it has. And that lends or translates into edge stability as you're cutting. It may not have the abrasion resistance as some of the uh, powder metallurgy steels out there, but the edge still feels like it lasts a long time because you are able to get it so, so sharp. And the edge itself is durable, you know, really resists uh, chipping very nicely. At least that's been my experience on knives with this steel. So I'm a big fan. Several different versions uh, color wise are available on this knife. This one has the black stonewash blade and the white handles. We've got a almost deep carry pocket clip, uh, standard type of uh, construction or attachment right there. Liner lock, nested liner lock, which is a nice touch and ball bearings in that pivot. Let's do the opening. Well, it is a front flipper. I stink at front flippers in general. Yeah, that's it. Oh, come on. It works but we all know I'm not the best at that sort of thing anyway. You, you'd probably be able to do a better job than I can. But you've also got that big blade cutout. Works great for a thumb open, and of course, lots of fun for the reverse flick too. Feels good in the hand. You've got you know a pretty decent amount of length there for bigger grips, and that nice, powerful feeling blade. Geometry's pretty good. Slightly thicker than some other budget stuff out there, but I like the, uh, I like the angles that I see on that flat grind there. It should slice pretty decently, but you've got the meat behind the spine uh, for bigger cuts. That's something that, you know, without even realizing it is a bit of a theme this week. We've had a few knives that kind of exhibit that characteristic. Uh, next up, uh, now this is the most affordable knife we've looked at uh, today. This is the Civivi Blue Tick. Uh, starts uh, at that $55 mark, but you can get it uh, with a Damascus blade and a wood handle that goes up to the uh, about $81, $80.75 cents to be exact right now. Uh, this one though has G10 handles and 14C 28N blade steel, about three and a half inches of it. Very cool. Big hollow grind on this knife, so very thin edges, which Civivi usually does so well, and that is the case here too. Ball bearings in the pivot, nested liner lock, and a deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible in this case. Let's check out the action. It flips just like a Civivi should, which is to say quite well. Big aggressive jimps here on the thumb ramped portion. So you've definitely got a ton of traction there. Very kind of sexy blade shape in my opinion. You could choke up on it a little bit, not quite a full size finger choil for my big fingers, but it does work for those more kind of delicate and precise, you know, little cuts that you might want to do with it. Very cool shape. And last but not least, we've got a couple of slip joints from Rosecraft. Uh, we've got the, uh, this is, this is like on the, the Saturday videos we do the FAQs where I don't read people's names before filming and then I, I butcher them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this wrong. The, the Nala Chucky, Nola Chucky, Nola Shuki. Probably close enough. It might be, 
it, it might be almost one of those things I just said. <laughs> It is a cool shape though, 62 bucks for this. You got a three inch D2 spear point blade, with that cool kind of flared spear point shape going on, which I really like. A nice high polished bone handles. This is the vintage moss brown color. You can see that, you know, the moss, it does have kind of a hint of uh, green coming through. Of course, some of that could be coming uh, from the way the dye interacts with the uh, natural bone material underneath. That meaning, of course, each one is gonna be a little bit different. Like all the Rosecraft slip joints though, like the quality is impeccable. The finishing is nice and flush. The polish is just about perfect. The half stop on the blade and the walk and talk feels great. Got a long pull on this particular knife, which I always enjoy. Um, just like it. Yeah, that's a cool shape. It kind of reminds me a bit of like a Barlow shape on the blade, but not quite a, uh, a traditional Barlow handle. That's just very cool. Yeah, digging that a lot. And like I said, like they're made super, super well. Uh, D2 steel, you don't often see that on uh, traditional uh, slip joints, especially in this price range. So you've got really good edge retention. The other one is the Briar Patch. We did look at this very briefly a couple weekends ago on those FAQ videos. If you've never seen one of those, they post on Saturday. You might wanna check them out. Uh, this one has two blades and is only a couple bucks more. This is 66 bucks. Uh, you've got the clip point and the lamb's foot blade on the other side. Typical slip joint fashion. They're nice and thin and slicey. The D2 steel is going to be quite nice. And the smoky gray bone is the uh, handle variation we see right here. Half stops. Yes, indeed. Nothing to complain about whatsoever, especially when you consider the price. That's it. That's all I've got to show you this week. Let me know what you thought of the knives down in the comments section as always. And if you want to get your hands on any of them, check out the links in the description, which will take you to knifecenter.com. While you're there, don't forget about our long running knife rewards program either, because the least thing we can do when you buy one of our knives today is give you some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. We are signing off. See you next time.